All right, so where was we at? You saying uh Oh yeah. Uh so I made that song, you don't, oh they don't even know. Right. Uh, I posted right. it on my Instagram. I remember you swiping up on it, and you're like, bro, I fuck with this, it's so hard. And like without like the beginning of me making music, like I felt like I had to have people listen to my shit. So I was like forcing people to listen to my shit. Like right. I was sending it to them, I was doing this, I was doing that. And I like quickly realized like that's not the type of energy that I want. Like right. me having to like force people to listen to my shit. Like you should wake up on a fucking Tuesday, 9 a.m., 8 a.m. on your way to work and be playing my shit and posting right. on your Snapchat without me asking. Right. Like if you really fuck with somebody's music, you're gonna do that type of shit. It's organic. You know what I mean? Like I'll have my friend Brian literally on the way to work send me a Snapchat of him listening to my music. I didn't ask him to play that that morning. Right. I didn't ask him to buy my song on iTunes. You know what I mean? The only thing I really ask people to do is come to my show. Because, I mean, you got to, like, right. promote your show. But yeah. I got music everywhere. Yeah. And if you're not listening to it, you're not a fan. If you're just here to say this and that and hopes that I make it big or right. in hopes I do this and then come back at me later like, hey, bro, remember when I fucking reposted your song on Instagram back right. in 2018? Like, yeah. fuck out of here. <laughs> right. like, you know what I mean? And that's it's, I mean, it's part of the process, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't. It's just wild, though, bro. Like, uh, I don't know. I know that you was you were definitely a trailblazer. You ain't Quentin were the first ones that were like, you know, this is possible. But like you said, uh, when you're trying to force people to listen to your shit, for me at first, it's like you don't realize that there is the whole world, or that you can even have access to them. So that's kind of what I was doing. You know, exactly. I was trying to do the local support thing, but at the same time, the it's, whole world it's, it's going to come from people you would not expect it to come from, bro. Right. The people you would expect to like listen to your shit. I mean, I've had it lucky because I got a really solid, good group of friends right. that for real like listen to my music and, you know, always buy tickets to my shows, even if they don't go, bro. Like, you ain't right. even got to go to my show. Like, if you buy a ticket, like, you're helping me get paid. Right. Like, it's, it's $15. Right. I can see you go spend fifteen dollars at Taco Bell, right. but you can't send me fifteen right. for a ticket. Right. Like fuck out of here. This is it's what it does is it keeps a show, it's an intention show. Really, it's like a testament. You know, it's like these 100%. these moments are testaments. I feel like so it's like um, and that's kind of why I, I don't know. I regret kind of I don't know a lot of the things I've done. Like you said, I regret kind of just being so on my Snapchat about it. Like I would rather post it to like the world. I'd rather I don't know. I don't want to ask. Like you said, I don't want force. All these, all, yeah, it's, it's force energy, bro. Yeah, like, this is rather organic. You know, like Listen people, and half the time, like even if I posted it on my Snapchat story or Instagram story, like people are just going to like listen, like click the volume button, hear what's playing. It's a, all oh, to be right. skip right through it. You know what I mean? Like they ain't taking the time to like realize your growth, realize right, right. this, realize that. Like it's not, like the support is not where you came from, bro. It's always yeah. going to be outside the circle. Hundred fucking percent. It's almost like when I listen to my own music, bro. I hear it from. It's like I, my insecurities are attached to it or something. Like when I hear like a beat you made, my insecurities ain't attached to it. I hear it super objectively. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I hear my snares and I'm super critical of them. I'm like, is that the right snare? You know what I'm saying? Like I don't think like that with other people. But you also beats. just started making beats, right? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. You got to tap into that mode where it's like. Like when I was first making beats, bro. I mean, I had FL Studio, and I like listen to it. and I'm like, yeah, it's kind of sound alright. Like, then I listen to uh, that big ass producer on fucking YouTube, AP Music or AP whatever it is. Right. Um, and his beats were always fire, and I was the same way. I'm like, how the fuck can I not get my 808 to hit like that? Right. Why are my kicks not layered the way that his are? Like, right. You know what I mean? But then I was like, fuck that. Like, I'm not gonna think like that. Yeah. So I would go watch. I would just go educate myself right you know what i mean like you, do, you know what i mean like if you ever felt bad about your beats or this and that like just don't take so much criticism on yourself learn from it educate yourself i always started a new beat whenever i didn't fuck with it if there was one thing off of my beat i was like fuck this scratch it open up a new one you think like, that's a bad thing or do you think that's a good thing i mean it's got pros and cons like you know what i mean like it's a challenge. Like, you know, if you start making the beat and, like, you not really fucking with it, like, it's like, damn, like, how can I make this beat better? Right. And you start putting all this time and all this effort into it, and then it's just mediocre to you. Yeah. Rather than just, like, starting from scratch with a new beat, and you're like, all right, let's switch the vibe up. 
let's get different drums in here. Let's get different hi hats. You know what right. I mean? Like, and just change the vibe and kind of give you a sense of like, okay, you can't be scared to let go of certain yeah. shit that you right. drop or certain shit you're working on because the next one could be a fucking banger. Yeah, you know, know what I mean? And what I realized too is like when you're thinking in your head, I'm trying to make something good, right? And then you make three or four or five things. It's like this might be to somebody this level of good. This might be to somebody, you know what I'm saying? But it, you had the same intention throughout all of it. Yep. And that's what's dope about like perception. You know what I'm saying? It's like somebody could just not even. Exactly. I mean, you love your shit, man. Yeah. I mean, you, you brought that to my eyes, bro. Like multiple times when I drive some, or I got so much shit in my Google drive right now that I bro. do not fuck with. And then like, I'll send it to you and you're like, bro, that shit is fucking hard. And I'm like, I guess it is kind of hard. Yeah, it's like your insecurities or something are attached yeah. to it. Like, it's so weird. I don't even understand. You got to let go of that shit, bro. And I mean, I'm still learning that in certain situations. Like, I, I showed Anthony, like, four or five songs I got unreleased. And I'm like, yeah, they're very mad. And he's right. like, bro, you literally have an entire, like, you're bitching about yeah. not dropping new music. You have music in your fucking, you like, catalog, album. homie. Drop that shit. You like, got an <laughs> album, bro. Like, you know what I mean? But uh, you played me one record last time when you was riding around, bro, and it was hard as fuck. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, dude, that's that's one of them ones. This, yeah, that's tight. Like I would look back on that, like I'm proud of this creation. You know, and I, mean? I was probably like, yeah, this one's kind of all right. Like, you know what I mean? But what do you think? What do you think is? Why do you do that? You think? Same shit every artist goes through, bro. Like, but like you, what do you think? What do you? What is your goal? Are you gonna eventually pull them out, or are you gonna just keep them stacked up? You just chalk it up as like that's a stepping stone and learn. That's a learning experience. That's what's hard, bro. Like. There's like that that beat that I showed you I had like I always put my dates as my beats when I make them before I find a name for them. So that one that I sent you that was like March twenty second, twenty twenty two. I didn't even know that was in my fucking Google Drive, bro. I was sitting at work just listening to all my shit and I was like, damn bro, why did I never put this out? Like this song, this fucking beat is hard as fuck. But at the time, I probably listened to the beat and I was probably like, Yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? Like right. that beat's cool. Let's make another one. Right. I, I think what's really hard is that I am such a fucking perfectionist. Yeah. And it's such a curse and a blessing at the same time, bro. Like, if I think one little thing is off in my voice, in my verse, right. in my beat, I don't want nothing to do with it. Do you think that's a control thing? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think so, bro. It's like you want to control every aspect of right. it to make it the highest like to highest potential points. and and that's i think that's part of the drawback when it comes to like is anybody else gonna fuck with this right and like i gotta tap out of that mindset of like thinking like about the results and the people listening to it and this and that and come back to realizing that i'm the one making this if i think it's fucking hot it's fucking hot if i think this verse is hard this verse is hard and right. just kind of scale back on other people's opinions or that fear or anxiety or whatever the fuck it is of like me dropping this and it being a flop. Like that's what, obviously that what it like is. I ain't got no fucking hit records. Like all right. my shit's low key a flop, right. but it's still hard as fuck because I know it is. And I fuck with it. Like, flop is a weird thing because does that really matter if if the music's dope? No, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? No. Because it, and it's there forever. So in right. five years, that could get big. You right. Know, and you still own it. Right. I mean, when I drop, so I drop everyone know. I moved back from Illinois. I had all my recording equipment over at uh, Rocky's house. You know, Rock for Cola, right? Yep. High school. Bro. <laughs> I had this, this fucking MacBook sitting on his mini fridge. <laughs> my mic sitting on, it was this mic, but it was a, uh, I didn't have this stand for it. I had a stand-up stand. So it was my MacBook keyboard mouse on the mini fridge, the mic standing next to it. Um, and I was like, Rocky, I got the song. It's dope as fuck. Can I come over after work and record it? And he was like, yeah, duh. So I come over. You know, he's got his dogs in the fucking cage. Like, they're <laughs> fucking out there making noise. And, like, I recorded the song. And I think a year or two later, I made a music video to it. Right. So when I dropped the music video to it, the numbers on the song from two years ago right. shot the fuck up. Right. So you never know like when a song is gonna blow. I mean like shit, 
same thing with fucking Russ. All these songs, like Losing Control, right. um, What They Want, all right. this shit came out in like 2015. Yeah. And he really got popping in what, 2017, 2018? Yeah. yeah. Like, but that's why I like making music is because it's like history in a way. Yeah. It's a timestamp. Yeah. Like, yeah. I dropped this song four years ago. Well, guess what? Nine years later, that bitch is booming. <laughs> the same thing with that fucking, uh, the artist that made that song for Stranger Things. Right. Run around the hill, whatever. Bro, she dropped that song back in the 70s. You know how much fucking money oh, she's making yeah, right now, yeah, bro? I just heard about that. Yeah, Dog, yeah. you realize how much money she's making right now? And that's the key with timeless music, bro. bro it's crazy. That's that's why you gotta focus on the music. That's the right? type shit you gotta hold on to. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, but I just I don't know, bro, because I know that like I don't know, like I hundred percent. If I was in charge of your music, I would have done fucking put it out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just because, like you said, there's you just don't know, bro. Like you somebody could love this shit. You know what I'm saying? You don't know. Somebody could love this shit, and it's like the shit, like they're jamming every morning, and it's. So I'm know. saying, like, if you got an idea, and you got the song finished, or this and that, like, just put it out. Just put it like out. You ain't got nothing to lose. Why? I mean, if you don't get if you don't get enough plays on it, cool, whatever. Like, you put it out and you move on to the next one. Right. Like, there's always a next one. There's always the next time. Like, but it's ever evolving though, because I do that too. I put out a beat and don't get no plays, and I'm like, bro, this is like the hardest feel, beat. Yeah. Kind of feel hard. a little weird about it, yeah. bro. Yeah. Like, so yeah. That's I, just being too attached to the results. Exactly. Yeah. You gotta tap, like you said, tap out of that, bro. Just just make the shit. Put it yeah. out, make it, put it out, make it. Now, a lot that's helped me with that type of shit, though, is, like, meditating, bro. For I didn't start meditating until, like, probably a year ago. And, like, I mean, it might sound corny or cliche or something, but, like, bro, meditating is fucking OP. Like, I'm talking, like, yeah, that shit just brings you back into, like, the center of, like, the present rather than, like, focusing on the past. Right. Having anxiety about the future. Not even, like, in real life terms. Like, just music or anything like right you know i might meditate before i fucking record a song and it's like it just clears my mind bro and i'm like cool and i'm gonna drop this shit i don't give a fuck if anybody thinks it's whack or not like right. it makes you still it's still yes bro right. like it's just zen the fuck out this is where i'm at right now this is what i'm doing there's no outside influences on it and this is how it's gonna be well, bro especially because you got like a catalog like even russ said bro he had 26 songs before he started doing the one a week thing he had that half a year worth of records just to head that. It's exactly. like, bro, you got enough catalog to drop every week for how long? <laughs> you, think? you know what I'm saying? How many things, how many songs do you think you got finished? Shit. It's got to be at least over like 15. See, that would like, bro, that would easily That's like build three, up. four months. You know what I'm saying? That would easily build up every week. That's something I've been trying to do with the podcast episodes because like you said, bro, we're learning on the job with this shit. And I monetize the first thing. So I'm looking stupid on the internet. On the internet, I'm looking stupid. But it's like, bro, I don't know. Fuck it. Learn on the job, bro. You learn as you go, bro. And at some point, you'll look back on it like, like, fuck it. You know what I mean? I just took a leap of faith. Fuck it. That's how That's how my life's been, bro. I'm fucking, I'm so obsessed with taking risks, bro. Like, it's crazy. Like, moving to Illinois. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. Who the fuck gets up, moves to Illinois? I was like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? <laughs> Bro, I, was there. I was there for three years. But, like, yeah, at the same fine. time, like, I got, I finished my degree. All right. I'm a first time fucking college student in my family. Yeah. That's huge. I got my fucking kick ass dog. Is, that's a big deal, bro. You know what I mean? Like, because I, I mean, I went to Moorhead for two years, and then I, I quit. I dropped out, and I was like, bro, fuck this shit. And then when I moved to Illinois, I'm like, damn, I got an opportunity to go back to school. Fuck it. I wouldn't have got this if I didn't fucking move here. And right. I didn't even think about getting my degree when I moved to Illinois. You know what I mean? That's the type yeah. of shit when you take a risk, like it opens right. up more doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And the same thing with my job now, bro. Like when I when I first told a lot of people I was going to TQL because it's a sales job, yeah. everybody was like, "Oh, it's a pyramid scheme. Right. It's this, it's that. You ain't gonna make it." Like, oh, this and that. My perspective was, "Well, hey, guess what? I got a job for at least the next six months." You know what sure. I'm saying? Like, who knows where this could go? For sure. And guess what? Makes I just got paid a sixteen thousand dollars check. That's a good living, bro. Like, <laughs> that's a good living. And and it's just that's where my head is. Because if I get an opportunity coming at me, I'm going at it with a full head of steam. And it shows you how like everybody else is like 
how much you want to distance yourself from everybody else because you do so much so better average, than bro. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. It's like you don't. I've realize always it. been like that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize it there for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like you're in that spell of like just I don't know what it is. Even I don't know. I quit a lot of shit just because of you. I don't know, bro. I mean, people, habits, yeah, all that type of shit. Like, it's just weird. And that's what I learned when I moved to Illinois. I spent a lot of time by myself. Like, yeah, I had a girlfriend up there for a while. Um, but, like, for that three years, bro, like, I didn't, I mean, I was 22, 20, mm. yeah, 22, 21. Living in an apartment by myself. <laughs> New state. Nobody, you know what I mean? Go it's house. cold as fuck up there. It's, right. like, negative 10 degrees. It's windy as fuck. I'm driving a Honda Civic, like, in the snow, like. See that was yeah, that's it was terrible. Like, uh, but like, then again, uh, like I learned a lot of you know, I, I learned a lot more about myself. Like I've always like had a good grip on like myself just because yeah. the way that I was brought up. Right. But like being in Illinois, like taught me some different shit about like spending time by myself and yeah, yeah. dumping shit and energy into what I want, and that's why I started making music when I moved there. You know, I realized too. Like uh, I talked about this on like one of these past podcasts we did. But like a lot of your decisions, bro, like like your decisions kind of affect how you feel in a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, hell yeah. if you're making a bunch of like decisions that you feel guilty about, you just feel guilty all the fucking time. You know what I'm saying? If you're making like taking risks and making decisions that are on faith and shit like that, it's just rewarding. It's just it's a different feeling, bro. And like at the same time having people that are like doubting you and this and that. And then, like, once you do it, then they're telling you they're proud of you and shit. It's like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's just weird. I'll keep that in. same energy you had at the beginning, bro. It's like, just, for me, I feel like they're, they're, their opinions are with the wind. Like, it doesn't really stand on nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's because a lot of people, I think, realize that they don't have potential to be anything other than the fucking American standard, bro. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I think it's it's either clear just hate, fear of somebody making it doing something that they can't fucking do, or just for the simple fact that they would never try this because they're too scared of others' opinions. But I try to empathize just because, like, there was a point where I was under that spell. You know what I'm saying? Where I wasn't even, I didn't have that revelation of, like, you know what I'm saying? You got to have that revelation first before it's like, you know what? Fuck it. You know yeah, what I mean? hundred percent. But you have to have it. Sometimes 100%. you're under that spell and you're just not thinking clearly. hundred percent. Like, I mean, when I was first, like when I first started making beats and I was sending them to people and they would just be like, yes, that's pretty dope. Right. I'd be like, you want to write to it? And they'd be yeah. like, yeah, send it over. Never hear nothing back. I'm right. like, damn, bro. Like maybe my shit is trash. Well, that's the thing is in the beginning, like, in your head, it's like, I know I'm capable of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you haven't quite put that time in. Actually, no. your skill level hasn't quite lived up to exactly. that. But at the same time, you're learning on a job, so. And then once you get to a position where, like, you know, like, I mean, there's always a pattern to everything. It's like, once you get into the, the level to where, I mean, I just made it simple being, like, yeah. 10 minutes. Right. Like that's the ten thousand. Back in the hours. day, that probably would have took me. You know right. what I'm saying? That probably would have took me hours to just fuck with some shit like that. Right. Because yeah. I'm watching YouTube videos on how to make a hi hat pattern. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's the now 10, it's like cool. hours. That's what I'm saying. So but it's like that's what I realized is like the talent was always there, right? But you gotta yes. you don't know, you don't have the information, information resources, right? Knowledge, like. But it's crazy how far you can come in a short period of time, bro. bro. Like. You know, it's insane. Even, it's insane. Even a lot of the shit we're doing is, I don't know, and it don't have to blow up overnight. No, hell no. There's no, I mean, the quicker you get into some shit, is the faster you get out, bro. Right, right. The quicker you blow, the quicker you get out. I mean, it's the people that really have just put, like, countless and countless and countless hours, days, like, months, years into the shit. Right that might fall off a little bit and then bounce right fucking back. It's not the people that, you know, blow up with one song. Now they got a fucking record deal and they realize, oh, guess what? We ain't selling the artist no more. We're selling this one song. So now if you don't drop another fucking good song, this man's going to be toast. You know what I realized? It happens so fucking often. Right. 
because yeah, people are tapping into the song rather than the artist. Because the artist that's ain't, true too, ain't got no catalog, bro. But that's, I feel like that's on the listener. You know, a lot of that falls on the consumer. Like, uh, I feel like I listen for the artist. You know, I ain't really like the song is dope, but you can tell like when you hear a Russ record for the first time, you're like, I feel like he's capable of doing this more than once. You know, it's like he ain't just 100%. this one record time. And you guy. know why? Why he's because fucking 10 years ago right he was putting out 11 albums right putting that time he was putting out the same type of songs he's making now he just had a lesser quality he just a lesser this i mean then he fucking learned and he fucking grinded he did this and that and he's putting out bangers you know what's crazy though dustin bro is like there's other ways to monetize your shit too like bro you can pitch your music for syncs you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. there's sync websites that what they do is like people who are looking for or making movies or making content, they submit uh, submissions to this to these websites and like people pitch their songs. Like I'll ask, oh, I want an instrumental of male vocal instrumental, and they'll put it on this website, and people like us will pitch our music to them to see. I kind of send them a link or some shit. Well, it's like you put the you put the file on that website. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So they can just listen to it. I ain't even but heard of you. That. Get paid for that. You know what I'm saying? Like you get paid to get put in these videos. Damn. So there's all kind of different ways for to monetize your shit. There's so, I mean, that and on top of like, there's a lot of dope ass artists out there that are like doing shit for an independent artist. Yeah. Uh, Joiner Lucas, for a fact, he made the Tooley app. What's that? Uh, the Tooley app. I think it's like a monthly subscription, um, but you can like record shit and just post it up on there. And he has like challenges. He'll be like, hey, he put out like the ISIS beat. Have you heard ISIS yeah, with him? Yeah, and, yeah. Him and Logic. He was yeah. like, whoever wins this challenge we'll get a feature with tech nine or a feature with this or feature with that like right. he's given artists like there's so many opportunities to progress right. that it's like why won't i do this like you know what i mean like it's like to uh, a lot of this music bro is like uh i don't know it's kind of just touching on what i just said but it's like uh it can hold its value for a long time it's almost like stocks like you can pitch your song that you made five years ago and get it in a movie this year you know so it's all super weird bro the fact that it's like i'm gonna have to get that website it sounds pretty dope bro, check out song trader song trader.com and it's like you put your songs on there i have to put that in my notes are you uh are you like with the uh, performance rights organization no like bmi or ascap uh i think i did have a bmi when i was on tune core but i can't remember right it's i think it's a two-year contract so if you if you did it if it's uh two years you know what i'm saying then it might be over but it might you might still be on the contract but even something like there's different kinds of royalties bro like if people play your songs at a concert you're sure you get paid for that or like a dj at the nba yes, game exactly right? like that's a pub that's what the publishing deal does like uh that's why you want a publishing administrator like if i play your music somewhere that i don't know how exactly it works but you're supposed to get paid for that and and you wouldn't realize that. Like, if we recorded this, this is an interesting thing. Like, if I played a song of yours on this podcast, I and somebody streams that, does that count for your song? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 100%. I mean, if it was played through the podcast, yeah. See, that's, so, that's, so the thing is, is like, I mean, if they play it through, like, Apple Music or Spotify, like, there's right, no rules exactly. because, you know what I mean? Right. But if they, because I distributed it to those. Exactly, yeah. Now... If they're somehow got a hold of my song and they're playing it on their Twitch, right? They're fucking using it for a YouTube video. Yes. If they're doing anything that can make them money or get them views, and it's my song, hey, my world right. speech. And that's what's a lot of these. That's what's dope about SoundCloud is, even those people who had those tracks that had those loops already monetized. Like, I tried to monetize this beat I made, and I couldn't because somebody already monetized it. No that way. loop. So, that's yeah, that's what, I started just saying, fuck these loops, bro. I'm about to start making melodies. You know what I'm saying? Cause Have you been watching videos, though? I, honestly, bro, I, the last video I watched was about something like just like every other every other key. And that really helped me out a lot, just making like chord progressions. Yeah, that's what you need. I think that's the, the biggest part about you need to learn music theory, right. chord progressions, um and honestly for melodies bro you, you might have to get some plugins i got i just got kind of tapped into the plugin game recently plugins are fucking crazy you doing anything after this hell no 
You want to fucking make a couple beats or something? Cook some shit up, homie. I'm chilling. It's, yeah, I got hella plugins, bro. I actually just recently downloaded some dope plugins. So I want to I wanna see what we can do with that, bro. Because I know <laughs> last time we were here, we cooked some shit it's up. It's like with the plugins, it's like, all right, say if I got like a simple piano. I mean, like, let's say this was our melody that we made up. With the plugins, if the instrument sounds like this standard, you can add shit to it. I can add a reverb. Right. I can cut it in and out. Like, sounds like a whole new instrument. But you can't do that if it's already a loop. Right, right. I right. mean, yeah, sure. If I wanted to, I could pitch this down or. Exactly. And that's what I, I didn't mean, realize. Like, and even that saves the monetization thing. If you do that, I'm pretty sure you're like somebody can make money off of it now. Like you did something to it, right? So I'm pretty sure you're not monopolizing it. Right. Ain't that what it would be? Ain't that, is that the right word? I don't know. I would say because yeah. you really own if you monetize it, you you fucking own it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I mean it's your loop. All those loops I monetized, I technically own. If anybody tries, oh to yeah, I mean, shit. oh yeah. Even if they you like take, mean? even if they take your original loop and cut it and do this and that or edit it in any way, you will definitely get your royalties for that. You know what's crazy, bro? I mean, that's just like a uh, vanilla ice, bro. Isn't right. It? Ice Ice Baby got fucking, he got sued like crazy for that song. Right. You Pretty sure I mean? he said it goes to gold every year. Still. Yeah. And he probably don't get no royalties for it <laughs> because he sampled it from another song. Right, right. And those record label people ain't fucking around with that. Right. That's what's crazy about, I don't, I, I'm a lot uneducated on it because there's like three different kind of like, like there's the masters, which is the whole composition. There's the publishing, yep. which is the lyrics. And then there's the, like mechanical well, royalties or something um, like when it comes to it so like a lot of like producers or artists um they can give you like a lease right. so like you can pay them 30 bucks for an mp3 of the beat and you can only you can't use it for music videos you can't do this you right. can't do that there comes with like stipulations of each right. like thing but you know if you pay there's a lot of beats on youtube where it's like okay 35 dollar lease fifty dollar premium lease where you can use it to use it in a music video or right. put it on apple music or this and that or three hundred fifty dollars in the beach yours you own all rights right, to it. right right you can do whatever the fuck you want with it right so there's stipulations with each cost of royalties um but i mean if you buy that shit out and you own that shit you can do what the fuck you want with it that's, that's what's dope bro about making your own melodies is that you you're making your own loops yep you're you're, you're being hands-on with it you're creating with it. And, and that's what we've been doing about with everything with making music period yeah because we we didn't know how to do it so we said fuck it like start with what you got fucking learning myself right which is crazy bro <laughs> was it what was it, what about your job bro like what, what what led you to that like did you you didn't you just find that on indeed yeah they called me bro and that's the type of shit that i'll be doing bro like when i get an opportunity like that i'm taking it i was so <clears throat> when i was living in illinois I was working some bullshit ass warehouse job full time from like 3 p.m. to 1:30 a.m. and then had school full time from 8 a.m. to fucking 1 p.m. Right. for two years straight. Right. You know what I'm saying? You so I all day with it. Dude, it was crazy. So then I moved back to uh, so what helped me move back to Kentucky? Um, you know, it, it wasn't easy for me to just be like, oh, cool, I got an apartment in Kentucky, I can go live in. Right. Um, my grandma let me move back, move in with her until I got my shit straight. Uh, so I moved back in September. I started working at DHL in October. So I was working at DHL a third time, fucking bullshit ass job. Um, and then I put my fucking resume out there on Indeed and all this shit and fucking TQL. One of the recruiters called me and was like, hey, like blah, 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 blah. blah. Did a phone interview, uh, went in an interview with the recruiter and then an interview with the manager, bro. And told me I was hired and after that it was fucking history. That's the well, shit, bro. At least, and the entire time when I was telling people I was interviewing there, they were like, "Oh, I used to work there. Like, you don't want to do it, this and that." Or, "Yeah, my friend worked there. He didn't make it. This and this and that." And I'm like, "Bro, I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. Like, right. I ain't them. Like, right? Like, I'm not your friend. I'm right. not you, motherfucker. Like, I got a job for the next six months. Right. And who knows how this job's gonna go? But I'm gonna fucking be a sponge." Right. And take everything in and see where the fucking goes and chilling right now. <laughs> I appreciate you uh appreciate you doing this, bro, because 
And if anything, it's it's shining some light on whatever you got going on as well, bro. So I'll probably oh, mention you on the in the description and whatnot. But hell yeah, appreciate you. Let's cook up some nah, nah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs>